Hey guys, welcome back to the Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. We're getting ready for race week, which is some of the most exciting times of the year. I love these races, race week, drag week, Midwest drags. It's just such a cool test of man and machine. Today, we are gonna cover how to pack your race week or drag week trailer, because if you're a newbie, you definitely have no idea. You think you might, but you don't. If you're somebody that's been doing it for a while, you might be able to teach me a few things. Along with that, the size of the trailer, the shape of the trailer, because let's face it, a 72 Nova, you know, making 1800 horsepower is not designed to pull a trailer. So we have to kind of hold on that edge between bringing what we need and wearing the car out. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the first week we did uh, drag week, uh, Andy and I did it together in his 2005 GTO. It was a uh, drag week, it started in Ohio, I think it was back in like 2015 or 16. We brought a huge U-Haul trailer and the rules say you can have a four by six trailer. So by golly, we were gonna bring the biggest trailer we could. And those U-Haul trailers are super heavy. They're very much a wind block because they're super tall. I don't suggest it for anybody, like nobody. It became an issue and with an all motor car with a turbo 400 with a high stall, it made it miserable. Uh, we, I think we ended up going 55 the whole time. Otherwise the transmission would overheat. It was riding on a converter because of so much weight was on it. It was just generally not a great thing. So I'll show you the style trailer I use. The first year I did race week uh, or drag week, I should say, I actually packed everything in the Nova in the trunk of my Nova. That was okay, but it was really a big pain in the butt. Not only did it make the car really ride kind of low, it beat up the trunk. Every time you had to fill up with fuel, you had to like try and move stuff away so you could get to the fuel cell, so you could get to the gas cap. Additionally, you know, the last thing you want to do when you're tired is load everything because the strategy is as much about endurance as it is about racing. So we came up with this trailer. This allows you to have a very low profile. If you look, thing comes up not even to my waist. So it keeps the wind off of uh, the trailer so it's not pulling. It's got enough cargo space to carry everything you need. And then it has, you know, some other things built in where you can kind of strategically play stuff. I always have drive wheels and tires. The second year I did drag week, we got caught in a, what was a hurricane? I think it was like, I don't know what class hurricane it was, but it was bad. It rained the whole time. I didn't have, I just had ET Street Pros and we were about to go off the road the whole time. So now I carry two sets of tires. So when I'm driving between tracks, I'll put uh, the radials on here and I'll put these tires on the Nova. These are just cheap mounts that you can get at most like uh, farm implement stores. They're just basically a trailer spare tire mount. And then I just use spacers to kind of get the offset right. Mine has this front box, which is really handy because you can stick some of the stuff you need the most in there because I'll show you why you won't want to be able to or have to open this lid all the time. So I put in like the ratchets I need to change things over. I put in uh, jacks, straps, extension cords, stuff like that that you might want to access really quickly on the road or when you start changing the car over. And the reason for that is after we get the main box loaded, I end up putting I bring two tanks of C16, so two of those plastic jugs, and then I will strap my cooler on here and I'll just ratchet strap it all down. That makes it really difficult to get back in here. Um, not that you can't, but if you're just stopping for a quick second or if you're trying to get going when you get to the track, you wanna have your main tools to convert your car over in here, and then you can start unstrapping this as well. Additionally, I took a old Kirky seat bracket and cut it up, and that's what I will use to mount my jack right here. You don't need a huge jack. You just need something to get the job done. So you want something light because you're going to be moving this stuff a lot. I will start showing you what I bring and what I don't bring because, like I said before, what you bring can just as much cause you a problem as what you don't bring. I know the saying is bring everything, you'll need nothing but that can also wear your car out and break stuff. Um, I have friends who have overheated cars and not been able to finish because they had such a big trailer and it was a wind block and it was heavy and it just tore up the transmission. So being very frugal about what you bring is super important. So this is actually just like a Harley Davidson uh, trailer that you would pull behind a motorcycle, which works out really well. The one thing I forgot to say about earlier is um, you wanna make sure you have a spare tire. So we have one mounted under there. A lot of them come like that. You can get these trailers. Uh, this one's just kind of a cheapo aluminum tread plate one. I think I got it for like 700. Brian's got a real fancy one he got for like a thousand. Andy's got a semi-fancy one. 
Uh, but those motorcycle trailers, they're pretty abundant because everybody takes them to like Sturgis and stuff. And usually they use them once or twice and then they sell them for super cheap. If you buy them new, I think they're almost two grand. The strategy you wanna take here is to pack what you need. Again, like we, what we talked about up there, you wanna pack what you need very accessible and the stuff you don't need unaccessible. So I always bring a starter because inevitably somebody needs a starter and usually it's me things happen and uh, if you can't start, you can't go. So that's something that I don't plan on needing. And if I absolutely need it, I wouldn't feel bad about unpacking the whole trailer to get to it or just digging it out real quick. Another thing that will go along with that is like my oil and my transmission fluids. Last year, I think we changed the oil once. Probably do it once or twice this year. We're gonna change the, change the tranny fluid um, probably twice during the race. So again, that's stuff that uh, we'll probably do in maintenance in a parking lot somewhere. So we'll go ahead and pack that in the very back because it won't be something we need every time we open the box. Another thing that we are going to bring extra are some head gaskets. I really don't wanna need these. So I'm gonna park, put them at the very back because when you're unloading and loading, you inevitably damage a bunch of stuff. So we don't wanna bend these or get them messed up. There's actually some room back there and there's a perfect flat spot. So I'll start packing that in the back there. I don't plan on sending it hard enough to need those, but you just never know. But same thing with these header gaskets. I'm gonna put a set of these back there. Anything you wanna keep flat, and uh, you aren't gonna need. Obviously you can utilize the sides. I got these cheapo wrench sets and they had these uh, things. So instead of rolling them up and taking a bunch of space, I just hung them in that dead space underneath this lip here. And that actually makes them really accessible because even with it packed, you can get to these wrenches and pull them out really quickly and easily. The main thing is to really utilize every square inch of this. So trying to figure out shapes that fit in places best is what's gonna really help you a lot. So we got the oil packed in there. We might end up moving this around. And we have a lot of our basics. Another thing that I learned, um, take stuff out of the boxes. The oil's pretty much tight, but if we run out of space, I can cut that box open and start shoving things in there as well. That makes a big difference because there's a ton of wasted space inside of packaging. If you're not trying to resell it or whatever afterwards, you can definitely shove stuff in those boxes and make up for some lost space. Another thing you're gonna want is a uh, pretty healthy dose of brake clean. That comes in big handy. A lot of times you end up restocking before the end of the week. I also picked up this uh, little light. You can't take enough LED lights with you because when things go wrong, you just want to toss them on the ground or toss them in 10 different places and light up the night sky so that you can see because as you know, things don't usually happen at the most opportune time. And then uh, you need some shop towels to go along with your uh, brake clean. So I also use these Milwaukee stackable cases. They have dividers and uh, little stacked compartments, I guess you'd call them. And then they, the actual units stack on top of each other. One of them I use for what I call supplies and the other one uh, I use for tools. Things like electrical tape, PTFE tape, ultra torque. If you have to change some head gaskets, you wanna make sure you have some ARP lube. Zip ties, I have metal in case I'm using uh, heat, heat wrap. And then I also have regular zip ties. And then I bring like a whole myriad of things like uh, liquid pipe tape, super glue, a couple different types of RTV. I always bring one of these tire repair kits. I'm actually gonna leave that out of, and put it in with the stuff that's easily accessible because that's not something you want. Stop leak, if you guys haven't used this, if you spring a leak in a radiator that's fabricated or have some other issue, even some of the like head gasket block issues and stuff, you can toss a couple of these tablets in it and it fixes most problems. It's terrible to uh, clean out later, but it'll get you down the road. And I've seen people make it through full race weekends by just adding these, um, if they had like a cracked head or a head gasket or a, uh, like a, a head that started leaking between uh, some ports or something like that. These are a lifesaver. Again, take it out of the package, saves room in here. Same with all of this stuff. Spare relays. I bring injector O-rings. I just never know on that. And then just a spare O-ring set for most like 10, 12, 16 stuff. Another couple of good things to bring are spare O2 sensors. Using extended periods of drive time and stuff, especially if it's a new build, sometimes you'll uncover uh, your design or lack of design on your turbo kit can actually kill sensors, uh, among other things. I bring spare push rods because we run these kind of uh, goofy and unique push rods. 
So that's always a good option. T-bolt clamps and V-bands. I actually don't have all my V-bands uh, in this picture right now, but as things go down the road, as you start to break stuff and uh, you wanna fix things or take it apart, especially like downpipe clamps and hot side stuff, you'll wanna have extras. So I always carry spare, spare uh, T-bolt clamps, spare V-band, at least one of each style. That way, if they get hot and brittle and they break when they're coming apart, you have options. So the other thing I do is bring some pre-made plug wires. At least they're pre-made on one end, long on the other end. You can get these builder kits from a bunch of different companies and then just bring the crimp ends on the other end. And that gives you the ability to fix spark plug wires because it's kind of hard to find spark plug wires on in the middle of nowhere. Okay, on the tool side, I like to have, I already have standard wrenches that are non-ratcheting in the trailer, but I like to have ratchet wrenches because of course they save you a bunch of time. And then, Valve setting tools, actually put those over there because they're used way less often. Uh, helicoil kit and uh, tap handles and tap ratchet. These things will save you big time, especially on all these aluminum LS engines because you can have M6 and the M8 and it'll pretty much cover every bolt on the engine. So I'll put that in my spare supplies along with the uh, other stuff there. I got some freshies of uh, sets of Allen wrenches so I'm not missing any made in the usa that's pretty cool standard hammer crescent wrench pliers wire strippers cutters that type of stuff and then the top one i will reserve for all the extensions for ratchets and then i'll put my ratchets in there after that i have uh i think everybody has like their basic assortment of random fittings so i like to bring that i have this box which actually has sensors and solenoids and some more random fittings and bolts that are useful sensors are big like i said with the other sensors if they're going to fail they're going to fail on race week so i got extra pressure transducers yeah you know, wiring for them i have o2 sensors in the other one and i have some temp sensors that i need to put in here these little dividers they're pretty handy and then we need some motion raceworks koozies for our bush lattes after a long day and then i bring stuff like post clamp self tappers snap rings Stuff that's just really hard to find on the road, unless you're in a big city. So I'll toss these in the very back again, kind of like the rest of the stuff, because I don't expect to need them very often, but sometimes you do. Another couple of good things. If you have a header wrap, bring it. Uh, this heat shielding for like wiring and stuff is big. Uh, you just never know what you're gonna run into. So I toss that in my, uh, my supplies bin. Sandpaper is nice to have, so you don't have to rub stuff on the pavement to smooth it back out. Uh, and a multimeter. I don't know what happened to the back of this one, but multi multimeters, uh, obviously what you're gonna go to on electrical stuff to fix it, so you definitely need to have one. Another couple good things to have along is a uh, magnetic tray. So that's kind of nice to when you're working on stuff, because obviously putting stuff on the ground, sometimes it's just easy to lose. Funnel, pan to drain stuff in, some safety wire, in case I got a safety wire, some stuff together. I bring a spool of wire because God forbid something gets torn, like a big bundle of wiring, at least you have stuff to fix it. And then to go along with this, I still need to pick up some uh, butt connectors. Never be ashamed of using butt connectors, especially in the field. They're quick, easy, they seal things up and uh, get you back on the road. You can always come back and fix the wire and make it pretty later, but making it functional and getting to the next stop or getting through the race is obviously the name of the game here. So kind of need to make sure you're concentrating on that and this allows you to do it. And if you can't really afford to have 10 different color wires in this little box that we got here. So like I said before, the least important stuff always goes on the bottom. So we have the supplies in the bottom and then uh, I'm gonna finish packing my tools and then we'll come back to this box. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you what I put in that front box uh, because that's important as well. For me, this little box up front is a go-to box. So I'm gonna put uh, my tools for changing wheels. I have my spark plug gapper tool. I have Zeus tools in there extra. I have a uh, extension cord. I bring tow straps just in case we get stranded on the side of the highway and need towed off. And then I, like I said, I put all the tools to change it from drive mode to race mode that also would include wheel chocks i put those on the trailer but you can also use those on the car when you're jacking it up uh, safety first in the pits so i got my tools when i get to the track in here that i need to uh, disassemble things take the parachute mount off put it back on uh, change the wheels i got the jack stands i got the jack right here so when we pull up within a matter of minutes we could be changing spark plugs changing wheels and tires 
uh, and doing anything else we need to do. Now the back here is basically done. I have to add a couple strips of sockets, which of course I don't need to show you guys all the way through that, but my pack outs are all done. And you can see there's a bunch of room for more stuff, which is awesome. And it just truly shows you how much you can fit in here. One thing I will note is that you shouldn't try to put in Loctite and stuff like that into here, especially if it's been open before. And actually I think last time it had not been open because uh, the packets when we got up into the elevation exploded and just made a huge mess everywhere. So uh, that's just a little takeaway tidbit for you. And then another thing people ask us about is wiring. Um, you can get these little four pin connectors at uh, any like farm implement or whatever. You can get them on Amazon, Google, whatever. But they're just basically brake, running lights, left and right turn. So they're super simple to wire into existing taillights. Obviously you're just gonna tap into the wiring for your taillights. And then uh, I just put a, I, I say I, Brad put a Deutsch connector, uh, DT connector on the back of the car so that I can remove that wiring when I'm not using and not on race week. So don't get carried away. Um, what we packed is what we bring. Granted, we haven't had a ton of bad breakages, but also that could be argued both ways. So a lot of people end up bringing spare third members and spare transmissions and spare heads and engines and so on and so forth. You know, if you have an IRS car that breaks axles, yeah, by all means bring axles. Uh, but if you're planning to break transmissions and you're planning to break third members and everything, you know, maybe you need to look at something a little stronger before you leave. Uh, this thing is one of the most powerful, one of the fastest cars on race week at any given time. Of course, you know, in the history of race week, drag week, there's been faster cars, but we just don't break a lot of that stuff. And I probably just jinx myself and I'll break every single thing this year. But in the three that we've done so far, we haven't needed the spare transmission, all that stuff. And my understanding and my thought process is I run a 400 or a power glide in everything that I build. I don't get fancy with the gear vendors. I don't care about the, the extra fuel mileage. I don't get fancy with the 4L80. They think those things just break nonstop. Nobody on race weeks running a 4L80 and not having a lot of issues. The number one reason I run a power glider 400 is because no matter what town you're in, there's always a transmission guy within 20 or 50 miles who can get you fixed right up. I mean, they might not have your exact replacement parts, but they're gonna be able to get you some parts and get it back together so you can go back down the road. That type of universal thought process actually lends itself well to running an LS or LT engine where 8 million trucks on the road have those engine parts. So that's another benefit, you know, starters, alternators, all that type of stuff are just really easy to come by. So keep it very simple. Don't overdo it because you're going to add a bunch of unneeded stress on your drive line, adding heat, breakages and all that stuff by carrying everything as if you were a Boy Scout or somebody that's just like a doomsday prepper. The common sense stuff that you may or may not have issues with, maybe an extra rocker arm or two, push rods, springs, whatever, fine. Just don't add all the weight in the world to it. Have everything fresh when you come to race week, have everything mechanically sound, and you can really avoid all that stuff. Plus, it's just easier to keep the bare minimum loaded in your race week trailer at all times, because that sure, uh, simplifies the packing and unpacking and when you're looking for stuff that's about it so basically from here all we're going to do is i'm sure over the next day we'll find a couple other things we want to add but of course we got a lot of room we'll take these gas cans put it up here we'll put a cooler on front so on the way to the track we can pick up our ice and that's it you're looking at a uh, fully packed race week trailer thanks for tuning in guys i know it's a lot of people's bucket list item to do a race week or drag week it was for me and I haven't stopped doing them ever since. So I wanna give you a little bit of insight so that your first race week, you come in not being like such a noob. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, thanks.